hydroxy urea uh, so we are actually going into the news of that so what happened is that it is the icmr the indian council of medical research so icmr seeks to provide oral formulation of hydroxy urea to to treat <coughs> sickle cell disease in children so to for sickle cell disease in children icmr is actually seeking hydroxy urea permission so that is the current affair thing so we have to understand what the sickle cell disease is what this thing called hydroxy urea is so that is the current affair topic we have to understand so this is a, a screenshot taken from the hindu itself this paper itself so uh, first and foremost we have to understand what this thing called sickle cell disease sickle cell anemia and all this thing is actually uh, so uh, we are actually india is actually a country which is actually uh, uh, india we can say the highest prevalence of sickle cell diseases in, in the entire south asia is actually on india that is around 20 million uh, people are actually affected with different kinds of sickle cell diseases in india so which means that it is a very important topic in the indian context also and next thing uh, what is this thing called actually uh, uh, sickle cell diseases so sickle disease diseases are actually inherited diseases which means that i must be i may be getting this particular disease if my either of my parents have that disease automatically that genes will be transferred to me so that is how mainly this particular disease is actually being transferred so what is this particular disorder or a disease is that it is actually uh, this particular disease was initially uh, for the first time described by none other than james herrick so you don't have to worry about those names so it was in 1930s and all 1910 actually the this particular person james herrick physician he actually described that this is the condition of this particular disease he actually coined the term sickle cell disease etc so what does this particular disease actually means is that we know that there is in our blood there is rbc that is red blood corpuscles wbc also uh, platelets also so different constituents are there in our blood so in our blood the one of the major constituents that is rbc that is uh, red blood corpuscles are there and normally we can say it is actually in the donut shape it is actually in a roughly round shape and in this particular uh, rbc inside that we can see that there are different kind of molecules in that what are those kind of uh, particles inside the rbc they are actually hemoglobins so what is the role of a hemoglobin hemoglobin actually allows to transfer oxygen molecules it actually helps to transport oxygen molecules into different parts of the body so ultimately this particular disease is is that the round uh, uh, rbc is actually getting into and up now because of uh, uh, a what do you mean by sickled rbc that is it goes to a crescent look or, or you can say a sickled look so it is not in the round shape it becomes a sickled look uh, you know rbc so what the result of it the in the normal rbc in the round shape there is normal hemoglobin but in the sickle shape rbc what happens is that the hemoglobin will be behaving or the shape will be behaving abnormally so that is the uh, concept of sickle cell disease that is the red blood corpuscles within the blood becoming a sickle cell shape that is the concept of sickle cell disease so what is the result of this particular thing we have to understand that this is the normal cause right so if there is a uh, normal situation the rbc says that the rbc says got the hemoglobin molecules will be inside the rbc and when the when we breathe in the, what do we mean that we breathe uh, you know oxygen and all or when the oxygen actually reaches lungs the lungs actually gives it to the different parts of the body right how the lungs transports or give the oxygen to different parts of the body the oxygen from lungs go to the rbc that is the red, uh, uh, the red blood corpuscle and it actually combines with the hemoglobin molecule which is in the inside the rbc so rbc has uh, hemoglobin molecules the oxygen combines with them and then the oxygen actually bonds to hemoglobin and the third thing is that when the rbc when the blood is actually going to different parts of the body which has hemoglobin which is actually bound binded bound with the particular oxygen molecule and this oxygen release uh, is actually later released into the different tissues in the different parts of the body so that is why that is how the particular oxygen is actually getting into different parts of the body who is actually transporting oxygen rbc with the help of hemoglobin molecules so that is a normal system happening and what happens in this particular sickle cell disease is that this particular round uh, rbcs are actually getting transformed into sickle uh, you know shapes right so uh, earlier it was actually going very smoothly because if there is actually uh, the blood is actually going to different blood vessels and all it has to go through different you know uh, arteries veins etc at that time it is actually very smooth why it is actually a round shape it goes very smooth but when it is actually in the sickle shape it actually gets accumulated in that particular thing and ultimately it creates lot of issues such as blocks will be there so a lot of different issues are actually generated because of the sickle shell so which means that proper smooth movement of the blood will not be happening when it is actually in the abnormal state of hemoglobin or in the sickle cell shape 
so that is actually called the sickle cell diseases and uh, next thing is that because of this shape also because of these kind of issues also these kind of uh, rbcs or because of the shape they actually die so early which means that the count of the rbcs will be very low also in that particular person so one thing it is actually giving lot of issues such as heart issues uh, you know other other issues will be there second thing is that the number of the rbcs will also be less why because the rbcs will be dying off very early because of such issues so uh, then there will be slow movement of this particular rbcs inside the vessels ultimately creating lot of issues so this is the context of sickle cell disease and now we are actually going to understand the concept of the hydroxyurea so uh, what do you mean by hydroxyurea it is actually an oral chemotherapy drug so ultimately chemotherapy means that drug is actually go giving it for the uh, cancer treatment purposes and all so it is actually an oral drug that means we have to just swallow it it is not an injection method it is only an oral uh, method only and it is actually an anti metabolite so we have to understand the term anti metabolite so what do you mean by anti metabolite it is actually a drug which is actually uh, uh, what did what did does inside the body is that when you have this hydroxyurea it helps that particular rbc to regain the round shape so if it is in the sickle cell once you have this particular medicine slowly gradually the red blood cells will automatically regain the shape of roundness that is the thing which is actually done by the hydroxyurea so ultimately the blood flow will be comparatively smooth and all the the count of the rbcs will be maintained stable in a stable manner so that is how you treat this particular thing called red blood corpus uh, red blood cells and the next thing is that the icmr is actually wanting to mass produce hydroxyurea and they are actually uh, you know trying to find partners also why for children especially that is the news actually they are actually wanting icmr wanting to promote hydroxyurea for children so normally hydroxyurea is actually promoted in a very large tablet of 500 mg and something like that it is actually very large tablet so uh, icmr want to promote hydroxyurea in a very small composition as a very small tablet in very small uh, you know weightage and also that it could be given to small children also so if you if you are actually buying a very large 500 g uh, 500 mg of tablet if you are breaking it and if you are giving it to your children definitely the normal dosages the dosage will be different you know on each term you are actually consuming it so you have to have very precise amount of hydroxyurea every time you give it to children so which means that automatically you have to have very large precise tablets you should not actually break your tablet and eat in two times if you have you should have 250 g mg by a 500 g then break it 250 in the morning 250 in the evening that is not the proper way to do especially when it comes to the children so this particular thing has to be done specifically for the children so that is actually the context of uh, this particular current affair thing and uh, th this particular drug is actually used for a lot of different other things for example uh, for uh, the other uh, disorders such as thalassemia also it is actually a blood it is another uh, blood, blood disorder in which the uh, hemoglobin in the blood will be go the count of hemoglobin molecules will be comparatively less that is actually called thalassemia so such disorders can be treated with hydroxyurea and that is the current affair concept